Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tyron. and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install the cloud gaming service GeForce Now on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So this tutorial is going to apply for the new Apple Silicon Mac computers, but also applies to any modern Mac operating system as well, anything that runs Mac OS from the last few years. So one of the main things to note about GeForce Now is that this is a cloud-based gaming service. So this means that we're going to be streaming a large amount of video and your internet connection needs to be fast enough. So GeForce Now recommends that we have 15 megabit for 720p at 60 frames per second and 25 megabit for 1080p at 60 frames per second. So this basically refers to your internet speed. I do recommend that we have at least 25 megabit in order to make use of this service. So the easiest way to check your internet speed is to go to the Google website. And then what I like to do is type in the keyword speed test. And what that will give you is a window here from the measurement lab, which will allow us to run an internet speed test. And there are no ads on this page. So this is one of the fastest and quickest ways to check your internet speed. I'm gonna click run speed test here. So this speed is testing the download speed. So this is megabits per second of 151, which is plenty and we have the upload speed of 28 megabits per second of course as well as important is your latency so you might have a large bandwidth but if your latency is not good enough then you're not going to have a good experience under 50 milliseconds i'd say is probably just about the bare minimum that you'd need to have a good internet connection for this to work so the first thing we need to do is to go to the nvidia geforce now website so once we're on the main page what we can do is to click play now what I do recommend is that you test this out for yourself first before you commit to actually paying any money for it. That's because GeForce Now may or may not work depending on how fast your internet connection is. So what I do suggest is that we click the join button here and that we create an account. So if you don't have an account already, I recommend that you click here to create an account and all you have to do is enter your details and a password. I already have an account, so I'm going to click log in. My account is created with my Google account, so I'm just gonna click log in with Google and I'm gonna select my Google account. Here it's asking us to verify our account using the registered email address. I'm going to click the link in the email. So I'm gonna check my email now. All I need to do here is to click on verify my email address. Then I'll be able to log into my NVIDIA account. Here it's asking us to add additional security measures. I'm not gonna do this right now, but I do recommend that you take the time to do this at a later stage. So I'm gonna click not now. So now that I'm logged into my account, all I'm gonna do now is to scroll down and we're gonna click on download apps. And here we're going to download the Mac operating system version of the software. So I'm gonna click download here. And this is now downloading the DMG file. So now that the GeForce Now file has downloaded, I'm going to go to my downloads folder and finder and then double click on this DMG file. Then it's asking us to copy this application to the applications folder. So I'm just going to click and then drag and then let go on the applications folder. Then I'll close this. So you'll find this application under the NVIDIA GeForce Now. I'm gonna double click on this to open it. Here it's asking us if we're sure we want to open it and we are sure, so I'll click open here. So now that the application is loading, it's asking us whether we want to give permission to access the microphone. This is gonna be helpful for multiplayer games. I'm going to allow this by pressing okay. Here now I'm gonna press agree and continue. So now that I'm inside the GeForce Now application, I'm gonna click the log in now button here. And this opens up our browser window. I'm gonna click on the NVIDIA account there and I'm selecting my account. I've now logged in and I can now close the browser and then go into the application itself. And here I've got my account and it's showing that I'm on the free tier. So the important thing to note about the GeForce Now system is that it requires connecting certain game accounts. So for example, your Epic Games account or your Steam account. So what I'm gonna do here is to connect my Steam account here. So I'm gonna click connect your store accounts and we're gonna connect our Steam account. So here I'm logging into my Steam account and it's asking us for our Steam card, which is just an email authentication. So I've connected my Steam account, but we have to go through a further step where it's asking us to set our Steam account settings to public. So I'm just gonna do this now by clicking on this link. Here I'm gonna set the game details to public and then I'm gonna quit out of here and then click resync. So here we have the Steam account is now fully updated and we have 133 games attached to our Steam account on GeForce Now. I'm also gonna connect my Epic Games account by clicking connect here. And now I'm going to log in with my Epic Games account and I'll click login now. So now I'm gonna enter the security code that was emailed to me and press continue. And now I'm gonna allow Epic Games to be added to my GeForce Now account. So now I'm gonna close this browser window again. And now we have all the connections that we have available via Epic Games and also Steam. So now this is correctly showing my library of games. I can click see more here. And these are all the games that I can actually play 
on GeForce Now. So I'm going to sort this to A to Z and we're going to have a look at what we have available. So one of the main advantages of running GeForce Now is that we have access to a very large library of games that are not compatible for the Mac operating system. And even if they were compatible, they would be playable at higher frame rates and higher settings than what is possible on the M1 chip. Despite the fact that the M1 chip is very good, it can't be dedicated gaming hardware that exists in the GeForce Now cloud servers. So for example, one game I'm going to try is Cyberpunk 2077. I'm going to click on here now. And if you own the game on Steam or on Epic Games Store or on GOG, then you can actually add this to your account. I'm going to play this on my GOG account. So I'm going to click play here. So Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the few services that allow us to use the GOG account in order to log in and authenticate with the game. The rest is going to be Steam or Epic Games Store at the time of recording. So here I'm just going to, and now this game is loading. So it is actually possible to get the main menu up if you're running this game through crossover or through parallels. However, because this is a DirectX 12 title, at the time of recording, this game won't run on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac due to crossover and parallels not supporting the DirectX 12 graphics API. So all of this data that at the moment of this game is all streamed over the internet. So none of this was running locally on the computer. It's as if you're watching a kind of high quality YouTube video, but you can also control the game at the same time. So this really depends heavily on your internet connection. If you don't have good Wi-Fi or good internet, this is really not gonna work very well for you. So one thing that you can do with GeForce Now is that you can attach some peripherals. So obviously you can play with a keyboard and mouse. So I've got my mouse plugged in via the USB-C adapter. But you can also pair a Bluetooth controller. So the way to do that is that you go to the Apple logo and click System Preferences. Then you go to the Bluetooth settings and then you make sure that your wireless gamepad is connected. So I've got my Xbox One wireless controller here. And if you want to pair it, all you need to do is press the pair button and then it will appear in this menu here and you can connect it up. And this is gonna work fine with all games that support controller. So what I'm gonna do is come back into Cyberpunk 2077. So here we can see that Cyberpunk 2077 is working really well. It's actually looking fantastic and it's better than any kind of game that can be played locally on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac chip. And I'm playing this game with my keyboard and mouse, but I could also play with my controller as well. So if I come back here, the, the actual gameplay itself is actually extremely impressive. So the main thing about this is that there is a little bit of perceptible lag here. So if I look at the actual, let's say I'm aiming down sights and I press the trigger button, it does feel a little bit laggy. And I can see that more, probably more clearly in the actual menus itself. If I, if I look at the mouse lag, I can actually, f it does feel like it's hovering a little bit behind. And that's because we're streaming video from the internet and this, is, this mouse data needs to go to the GeForce Now servers and then come back to this computer. And so therefore there's a little bit of perceptible lag. So for example, if I press this button here, it does feel like there's a little tiny bit of lag that's there. But if I actually play some of the actual gameplay itself, then it's much less noticeable. So overall, I do prefer playing with the keyboard and mouse. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that now. And you know, it's actually extremely hard to tell that this is not being played locally. And this is really down to the speed of my connection. I'm very lucky to have a very fast internet connection. I'm not connected to the router at the moment, but it does feel very responsive. It's almost as good as local. And of course that will just depend on the quality of your internet connection. If you're lucky and you have a fast internet connection like I do, then this is going to work really well for you. However, if you're not that lucky, if you don't have a connection that's over say 30, 40 megabits per second, then you're going to have a much worse experience. Cyberpunk 2077 is a really interesting example to look at just because this game is not available on the Mac operating system. It can't be run through parallels or crossover. So at the time of recording, this is the only way to actually play this game if you want to play it on a Mac and you don't have access to any other kind of gaming hardware. So here I'm loading up a game of Apex Legends and this is one of the interesting cases because this is also another game that can't be played on parallels or crossover at the moment. And that's because of easy anti-cheat not being compatible with those systems. However, this is going to be an interesting case because it's a multiplayer game. And this game is going to be heavily impacted by the latency between the internet, between the servers and this M1 MacBook. In a competitive game like this, where every millisecond counts, it's going to be quite interesting to see whether it feels playable or not. Obviously we'll need a very fast internet connection for this to work. However, I do feel like it's gonna be a better experience playing locally on a Windows PC or on a console. So even just moving the mouse around, I can feel the latency and 
I hope that's not going to make too much of a difference when we're actually doing some actual fighting and first person multiplayer gameplay. Because in a game like Apex Legends, every single millisecond counts. I'm not sure if it's just bad at the game or this is not, doesn't really feel very good at the moment. As somebody who plays quite a lot of Apex, this, does, this feels completely unplayable at the moment. So I know that I'm not used, meant to be using the G7 scout like that, but I could not land a single hit. It just feels too, too laggy for me. So this is not an ideal experience at all. See, when we're playing first person shooters online, every single millisecond counts. It's not like a single player game like Cyberpunk 2077. This just feels much, much worse. So unfortunately, that's just the kind of experience we're gonna get is not landed a single bit of damage and uh, not competitive at all, I'm afraid. You can tell that GeForce Now is gonna be a much better experience for single player games that don't require much latency. I think that playing Cyberpunk 2077 is gonna be great through this service, but a game like Apex Legends, which is very competitive and relies on really low latency, is not really very enjoyable on the GeForce Now service at the moment, despite the fact that I've got very good internet speeds. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.